Well hello and welcome to our contemporary service today from St Andrews and All Saints Online here on a beautiful day when I'm recording in Malvern. My name's uh, Dave Bruce, I'm the rector here if you're not uh, sure of who I am, if we haven't met before. And uh, whether you're a regular here or whether you are a visitor looking in for the first time, just checking us out, you know you're really welcome to be part of our service today as we come in our separate places to meet with God afresh and worship God. And today we're going to be starting a new sermon series looking at God's promises and Helen Wilkinson, one of our um, uh, clergy here, is going to be bringing God's word to us from the book of Numbers, thinking about the, bless, the, the promise of blessing. And as we begin, I just wanted to start with some words of blessing, talking to us about how God blesses us from the beginning of Ephesians. And um, however you're feeling today, just put that aside and just hear these words of what God thinks about you and how God sees you. Ephesians 1, 3 to 6. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. As we start our worship today, let's just hear those words and dwell on them. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. You are chosen by God. However we feel about ourselves, you're chosen by God. You're adopted as God's children. You are deeply loved, however your week has been, however much you feel you've messed up. You're deeply loved by God. And you know, all of that was made possible because of Jesus, because of his death and resurrection uh, for us that first Easter. And so just dwelling on those things, let's come and bring our praise to Jesus. Let's affirm just who Jesus is. What a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. Sin was great. 
So as we begin this new series today, looking at God's promises, I wanted just to start by just sharing some verses which contain some of the great promises in the Bible. And as we look at these and dwell on them, it may be one of them which really resonates with you in your current situation, what you need to hear today. You know, I encourage you just to dwell on that as we hear this scripture speaking over us. And just to hear God's promise to you, his assurance, hear of who he is, of his character, and just rest in that. Isaiah 41.10 says, Sue, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not dismay, be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Psalm 147 verse 3. He, that's God, heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Just maybe for some of you, let God bandage your wounds, heal your brokenheartedness this morning. Lamentations 3, 22 to 23, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. For those feeling overwhelmed this morning, just hear these words. Because of the Lord's great love, you are not consumed. John 3.16 it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know, if we believe in, in God, if we believe in this amazing gospel and have chosen to follow him, we need not fear death. For God has promised us eternal life. Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. 
They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. If you're exhausted today, come to the God who promises to renew your strength, to let you run and walk and soar again. Revelation 21 verse 4, that promise of the new heaven and new earth, where he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Those who are just caught up in tears and mourning and death. Those who are grieving know that that is the old order of things, which one day will pass away. One day God will wipe every tear from your eyes for good forever. Corinthians 12 verse 9 my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness you know are you feeling weak today God promises that his grace is sufficient that in your weakness he will bring his power Corinthians 5 17 says therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old has gone the new has come you know to those who are burdened by guilt and shame from their past you know God says the old is gone that's not who you are anymore the new is here you're filled with my spirit Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I just sense there are many of us who, because of this last year, our hearts have grown hard, our hearts have grown cold, maybe towards God and maybe towards others. But you know, God promises not to leave us there. He invites us to come to him, to come to him who will make our hearts of stone, a heart of flesh. Just if that's you, I invite you right now to Just offer your heart to God and say, God, you promised to give me a new heart. Will you soften my heart again to you and to others? gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and of great goodness. Let's just dwell in his promises to you today. Amen. And this week we're beginning a new series of Bible teaching that's been chosen for a specific purpose. Uh, As Dave reminded us at our APCM, as we emerge from lockdown, we're in a season of reflection, of replanting, of reconnecting and recovery. 
Exactly what that's going to mean is hard to determine at the moment. And that's why Dave focused us last week on 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12, where it says how God's people simply prayed to him, how they focused on him. And the scripture text says, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And that's how we are feeling as a church right now, that our eyes are looking to God for the future. And so it seemed good in this season uh, that we should spend some time remembering what it means for us to be the people of God. So for the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at some of the promises of God that affirm our identity as God's chosen people. And that will be followed by a teaching series on our call to be collectively God's people, looking at the latter part of Paul's letter to the Romans. None of us comes out of lockdown unscathed. The world in which we live is in some ways the same, yet in many ways quite different from how it looked just over a year ago. And so we're in a time of transition. So for the first of our promises, we're going to begin with a promise that was given to another group of God's people when they too were on a journey. And like us, they'd been in the wilderness for just over a year. And the promise comes from the Old Testament book of Numbers. In fact, the Hebrew title for the book of Numbers is In the Wilderness. And it's the most wonderful promise of blessing that will enable us to begin our journey of transition, focusing on God's heart of love for us, that we might receive afresh that love for ourselves. But before we read this promise of blessing, just a bit of background. God's people, Israel, had recently known incarceration as slaves in Egypt, in their wilderness journey en route to the promised land. And they were re-emerging into an unfamiliar outside world, and it is in this situation that God meets them. He encourages them not to look to the past or even to the future, but to simply enjoy being who they are, a people belonging to God, who are deeply loved by him and whom he promises to bless. And so as we look at this uh, passage from the book of Numbers, let's pray together, shall we? Father God, thank you that your word speaks life into our hearts. We ask that today you will speak to us by this passage afresh in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. This reading is from number six, verses 22 to 27. The priestly blessing. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The heart of this promise is God's desire to bless. I will bless them. Sometimes this blessing is referred to as the Aaronic blessing because Aaron, the Jewish high priest, was the first one to use it. But in fact, the blessing is authored and executed by the Lord God Almighty himself. It is God who does the blessing. Notice also in this verse that God's people have God's name on them. Now, this is no small thing. In Bible times, names summed up a person's character and identity. Here in this promise, God calls himself Lord Yahweh, a name so sacred that could not be spoken. The name Yahweh encompasses his glory, his nature, his very self. Yet here in this promise, we find that God is so eager to own us that he says, I, the Lord, will put my name on them. We belong to the Lord of glory. In fact, we belong to the Lord of glory forever. 
The book of Revelation tells us that when we meet him in heaven, we will see him face to face and his name will be on our foreheads. Revelation 22 verse 4. So what all of this means is that God is for us. I can't emphasize that enough. He is eager to claim us, to say that we are his, to name us as his, and to bless us. In fact, blessing was always part of God's plan. At the start of creation, we find that when God made all living creatures, he blessed them. In other words, he wished them well. Be fruitful, he said, Genesis chapter 1, verse 22. In Genesis 9, in the story of Noah, God blessed Noah and his family. Be fruitful, he said. Take responsibility for the world where I've placed you. And as a sign of his commitment, God put a rainbow in the sky to remind them of his goodness and his desire to bless. Now, centuries later, in the midst of the wilderness journeyings en route to the promised land, God's people received this blessing under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. With the coming of Jesus, this blessing is only reinforced. In his teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus repeatedly announced God's blessings in statements that today we call the Beatitudes. And in his engagement with the crowds, Jesus blessed little children. At the end of Luke's Gospel, we find that when he finally bids farewell to his disciples and he ascends into heaven, he is still blessing them, Luke 24, verse 50. In fact, God has never stopped blessing his people. That's why Paul can write to the early church in Ephesus, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Every spiritual blessing in Christ. We are God's people. His name is on us, and we have his blessing. So what does this blessing mean exactly? What is it? Well, the word translated as blessing is actually quite nuanced. Simply translated, it can mean happy, but happiness is hard to define. The Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel can be translated happy, but it gets a bit tricky when Jesus says things like, blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you. Happy doesn't quite convey the right meaning. Being blessed is more than simply being comfortable. It's more like the Hebrew word shalom, meaning well-being. This is well-being, not well-having. This sort of happiness is not based on how much we possess, the things that make us comfortable. Blessing is like a shalom that brings well-being and fruitfulness. Remember, that was one of the first commands that Adam and Eve were given. The ideal portrayed by the Garden of Eden was for the people to be in an intimate relationship with God in circumstances designed for their well-being, in which they could bring about fruitful labor. The Hebrews knew their constant need of God's promise to bless. They turned it into worship in Psalms, such as Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation amongst all people. This Psalm echoes an interesting point, that the blessing wasn't just there for them. The blessing was to be shared. So they were blessed in order to bring blessing to others. It was part of God's call to Abraham, and it's a call to both the old Israel and to the new Israel of God, who are the church today. Living in the blessing ourselves will mean that we live to bless others. God designed it so that we could all bear fruit together. 
Yet it's a calling that is easy to shrink back from. The promise of blessing in number six is prayed over by the people by Aaron, who was a leader who failed God in a number of ways, once really badly. Nevertheless, God chose him to declare a blessing to others. And that's a great encouragement when so often we imagine that God won't want to use me. One way to get started is simply to use this blessing as a prayer for others. A friend of mine put a copy of number 6, 22 to 27, next to her wash basin. Every time she washes her hands, she prays this blessing for someone. She said that in a year of COVID, it's amazing how many people you can pray for. Don't ever think that what you have to offer is insignificant. I like to think that we're all links in a chain. And God uses each one of us to be a blessing to others in a whole host of different ways. One person who's really blessed me during lockdown has been my friend Elaine. Just over a year ago, Elaine was going through a really tough time when she bumped into a neighbour of hers who comes to St Andrews. Through that encounter, she heard about CAP and Elaine found them really helpful. CAP was followed by the practical kindness of the St. Andrew's Blessing Team, and I came pretty much at the end of the chain, really, offering friendship to Elaine at the end of a phone. Elaine often says to me that she dreads to think where she would be today if she hadn't experienced this blessing. She's found a real and living faith in Jesus in the past year, and it all started from that simple encounter with the St. Andrew's neighbour in the street. Elaine's given me permission to share a poem that she wrote at the beginning of this month. Today the sun is shining along with my heart and soul, and I thank the Lord for my new friends who saved me from my sad madness. In the Lord's name I now appreciate the love that is invisible unless you believe. So much sadness and loneliness taking me in and out of nowhere. So many doubts and fears accumulated throughout the years which easily added to my heavy mind. And the pain held me so tight that I couldn't breathe, leaving me even more alone and unable to trust the unknown and recognize the obvious anger within me, along with the unseen, which I now know to be the devil's work, as he tried to capture my soul. The thoughts which he encased in me, encouraging me to disbelieve the Lord's love and goodness, which is right in front of me for all to see. My soul and heart now cleansed, my future a reality of light and goodness, and my past a thing of nightmares which I no longer fear or cry over. And she ends with these words in bold, thank you, Lord, for your love and belief in me. You can read Elaine's poem for yourself in the weekly mailing on our website. Elaine's blessing from God has blessed me back. God's plan is for us to be a blessing to others. So let's have a look in a bit more detail as to what experiencing this blessing can mean for each one of us. I've already mentioned our well-being. The Lord's blessing here in number six also conveys on us his keeping power. The promise says the Lord bless you and keep you. God's keeping power offers security, even in a storm. The ancients feared the sea, and for them it represented the worst of the terrors that we can face in this life. That's in part why I think that when Jesus wanted to show his power over the whole of creation, he did so when he was trapped in a storm with his disciples on a tiny boat on Lake Galilee. They learned that if Jesus could be trusted to keep them safe in that situation, then he could be trusted with anything. We're currently in the season of Easter, and the resurrection reminds us that there is nothing that God's power cannot overcome, even death itself. 
That's why in his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 8, 38, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God keeps us, you see, even in the storm, even through a global pandemic. Knowing God's blessing is not a passport to an easy life, but it does mean that God never, ever lets us go. The promise moves on. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Proverbs 16 verse 15 says, When a king's face brightens, it means life. A shining face carries a sense of favour. God's face turned towards us speaks of his loving attention. The question is, do we seek his face or do we hide from it? Accepting blessing sounds obvious. Who won't want to have a sense of well-being, shalom, fruitfulness, security and a sense of belonging? of knowing the peace that's promised in verse 26. And yet Jesus got to the heart of our reluctance to accept the blessings when he spoke in Luke 15 of the parable of the prodigal son. The younger son had rejected the father's blessing and wandered away from his true home, away from his father's love. But when he came around, turned around and came back, he discovered that the father had a smiling face, a countenance so full of joy that he wanted to throw a party at his son's return. Not only was the father's face turned towards him, his whole body was. He ran out to meet him and brought him home. When God's face shines upon us, we experience his grace. Grace bridges the gap between my expectation of myself and the failure that I experience. In the parable, God's smiling face and his welcoming open arms offer the younger son his amazing grace. Yet the story also features an older son who couldn't bring himself to receive the blessing. He thought he was all sorted out. He could manage perfectly well, thank you very much. He thought he didn't need grace. And so he turned away from the father's open, smiling countenance turned towards him. He forfeited the father's blessing and failed to experience peace. Which son do you identify with the most, I wonder? If we accept this promise of blessing, it means that we can start each day with the expectation that God is rooting for us. He wants to bless each one of us so that we can be a blessing to others. It's a good idea to keep this promise from the book of Numbers handy to remind us we don't have to persuade God to bless us. It's we who need to be reminded. And at the end of the day, look back on the ways in which God has blessed you and give thanks. Many of us know this promise of blessing really well, and yet we still struggle to receive it on a daily basis. One reason that we fail to do that is that like the younger son in the parable of the prodigal son, we think that God won't want to bless us. In coming to his father, the young man thought that he wasn't worthy enough. Treat me one of your hired servants, he said to the father. I am not worthy to be your son. He may not have been worthy, 
But he knew that. But of course he wasn't worthless. How welcoming was his father when he returned. The Lord really wants to make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. So many of us secretly think that God wants to bless someone else and not me. But this blessing is given for all God's people. Whatever our personal story, God really is that gracious. The other thing that blocks us from this present, this blessing, is when we fail to realise that this promise in all its fullness is something that we don't really need. It's, it's too, too much. But think of the elder son in the parable. Some people can reckon that if they work hard enough, they can bring about the blessing themselves. Yet the whole point of this blessing is that it is God's gift to his people. It is God's gift to us. It is a sign of his ownership upon us, his name upon us. He alone is the bringer of blessing. We just have to receive. The Lord says, I will do the blessing. We're going to have time now to reflect on this promise of blessing. Whatever your situation, we can all receive God's blessing today. We'll have a few moments of silence first, after which we'll hear the song, O oh Lord, I receive your love. Maybe you felt isolated and alone recently and you need a fresh touch from the Lord to reassure you. Maybe you know you've been struggling on in your own strength through this pandemic and you need to know the Lord's love and blessing is on you. However you're feeling, know that the Lord is for you. He wants to bless you. So if I can invite you to hold out your hands as a gesture that you'd like to receive blessing from the Lord today, then we'll pray together. Holy Spirit, come to us today. Minister to where we are in this moment. We come recognizing our need as we claim this promise and we ask that you will fill us afresh with your love and your blessing and your grace as we do so. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will, I will put their name on the Israelites and I will bless them.
section we will say Lord as we seek your blessing please respond may we also be a blessing to others dear father we thank you for your promise of blessing and the many blessings we see in your world and in our own lives we continue to see your blessing on our lives on those we love and care for on our community in our nation and in the world we are sorry that we so often miss out on your blessing because we seek to go our own way and ignore the way you know is best for us. Help us in our journey to look to you for guidance and have the courage to follow you so that we would know more of your blessing in our lives. We thank you for the many blessings that we so often take for granted, for the gift of health, clean water, food and shelter, things that so much of the world does not have. We pray that as recipients of your blessing, we would seek to bless others. Lord, as we seek your blessing, may, may we, we also be a, be a blessing, blessing to, to others. others. We think about our church community here at St Andrews and thank you for the many blessings you give to us. We thank you for our wise and godly leadership, the support of a vibrant Christian community, and the ability to come together in worship, whether in person or online, throughout these challenging COVID times. We thank you particularly for Eddie and all the work he has done to build up our youth and encourage them in their faith. We pray for your wisdom as we seek a successor for him, who will continue the work he has begun and strengthen the faith of our youth and young adults within the community. We pray for those known to us and also those known only to you in our community who are suffering physically, emotionally or financially. We pray for our neighbours, the isolated and the sick. Please give strength to those who feel weak, energy to those who are weary and freedom to those who are burdened and pour out your blessings of love, healing and peace in their lives. Lord, as we seek your blessing, May, May we, we also, also be, be a, blessing a blessing to, to others. others. We remember our wider community here in Northern, our neighbours, our colleagues, our fellow students and our local businesses. We thank you that schools have returned after the Easter break and students and pupils can meet together again. And we continue to pray your blessing upon them, our teachers and classroom assistants. We thank you too that local businesses are slowly opening up again. We pray for those businesses and individuals who have struggled financially as well as personally with this latest lockdown and have suffered loss of livelihoods and confidence. We pray that we would be supportive and help in the rebuilding of a thriving business community by using the local facilities and businesses. Please show us also any other practical ways that we can support and show them our appreciation of all that they do within our community through our words and actions. Please bless our neighbours and continue to help us to know how to support them and show your kindness in all that we do and say, even as we come out of the lockdown. Point us in the direction of the lonely, those who are struggling 
and give us the courage to respond to your promptings. Lord, as we seek your blessing, may, may we, we also, also be, be a, a blessing, blessing to, to others. others. We thank you for our mission partners throughout this country and the world, often in very challenging situations which have been further compounded during this last year. We lift them and the places they serve to you in the quiet now. Please put out your blessing on them and their families and the communities they serve. May they know your wisdom and power in their work and please encourage them in all they seek to do in your name and for your glory. Lord, as we seek your blessing, may, may we, we also, also be, be a, blessing a blessing to, to others. others. Finally, we pray for our nation. We pray for our Queen, not only recently widowed, but also having this week celebrated her 95th birthday. May she know your love and peace in her very private grief as she continues to serve our nation. We also pray for our Prime Minister and all the leaders of this country and the world. We pray for wisdom and unity as they seek to steer the right course out of this worldwide crisis. We pray your blessing of godly counsel and a willingness to act with integrity and humility for the good of not only their own nations, but also the world. Lord, as we seek your blessing, may, may we, we also, also be, be a, a blessing, blessing to, to others. others. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, to shine upon you and be gracious, and be gracious unto you. So just before we say our final blessing and have our final song, I just want to say uh, two things. Firstly, you know, I just sense that God wants to uh, just bring healing to us, bring restoration to us, bring those promises to many of us in our different situations that we find ourselves in. And I want to encourage you, perhaps if a particular promise has stuck with you today, perhaps from some that I was reading out earlier, then just dwell on it this week. Go and write it on a bit of paper, put it uh, by your computer, put it on the fridge, whatever, and dwell and focus on the truth of that this week. And if there's anyone who would like prayer, um, you know, I've been really conscious that we haven't had the chance to pray with people, to minister to people as we normally do. You know, please email in to me, 
just if there's something you'd like us to pray for you, just email in what that is, perhaps a particular situation at the moment. Or if you'd like someone to pray with you, you know, we can organise that by Zoom or in person. And we would love to do that. So just do contact me if you would like prayer today. But I also want to just issue an invitation to us all. Last week was our annual uh, church meeting at St Andrews and a few weeks ago at All Saints. And there I particularly talked about this next season being a season of reconnection with people, with each other. As we the church learn to reconnect with each other in person over these coming weeks. And I want to issue an invitation, an invitation from God to say come and draw back to my special family that I've put here in Malvern. And that invitation is this, to, to find somebody who perhaps you haven't been in touch with for quite a while in the church or maybe even just a neighbour or someone that you know who's um, perhaps struggling at the moment. And connect with them some way this week, whether it's a phone call or whether it's going having a coffee, going and having a walk. And ask them two questions. One, firstly, is how has this lock, last lockdown been for you? I think a really important thing here in this time is hearing each other's stories of how life has been. Just listening, deep listening to each other to understand where different people are at. So one, how has this last lockdown been for you? And secondly, what can I pray for you? What can I pray for you? And actually, maybe even you, you, if you've, you're confident enough to pray for them there and then, or just commit to pray blessing on them in this coming week. But I really encourage you to, to do that as an invitation for to help us all reconnect with each other. Find someone, ask them, well, how's your lockdown, this last lockdown been for you? What can I pray for you? And pray God's blessing on them. So I'm going to say those words of our reading, the priestly blessing on each one of you and hear these. These are powerful words. May they dwell deeply in each of us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. May God bless you so that you may go and bless others this week. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord
Yeah. 